Episode 10. All right, episode 10. Welcome to The Good Hustle. Episode 10. Double digits. Yeah, we hit it. No never, congrats. Never thought it's we'd our make birthday, it. sort of. <laughs> yeah, never thought we'd make it this far. So, uh, um, But we're here today. This is like going to be probably like one of my all-time favorite episodes. So we're here with Kate Gillis, Ooh. dear friend. Hello. We've known each other for, it's oh like gosh. pushing 26 years. Oh my gosh. Which wow. is crazy. Because we, I'm never... only 26, so that's weird. Yeah, yeah. yeah. we were born Your entire in... life. <laughs> we were born in the same wing at a uh, Holy Spirit, and uh, I don't. know, That's where I was. Uh, <laughs> I was too. Actually. Yeah, there yeah. we go. So it's, it's, it's all it's all know. coming together. Same so, day and everything. Yeah. Yep. So Kate is an entrepreneur. She has a coffee shop called Noor Coffee Shop. Yes. And Noor is in Camp Hill, right on the border of Mechanicsburg. Yep. Not far from the Elks Club. If you know where Red Lobster is, I worked there for years too. R L one nine five. Uh, <laughs> but Nor is a unique coffee shop that yes. they train, employ, empower um, nor- neurodivergent and neurotypical people, Correct. which is very cool. Thank so, you. but before we get into that, let's talk about a little bit how we met. So, All right. where did we meet? Snappers. Right? <laughs> yeah. So we we were waitressing and waitering, yep. waiting tables yes, together we in high school. Yeah, actually college. Yeah. For me, because, well, because you had to be 18. So you were a senior in high school then? Uh-huh. That is crazy. I was a host first. Oh, that's so right. So I was, on, I was like mostest. 16. Yeah. <laughs> wow, that's crazy. So long. So Friday nights was my mom, my sister, and I. We were the three servers. I was with the crew. And then Saturday nights <laughs> was you and I and my mom, because Lola that's had right. off, or she was bartending or something like yeah. that. <laughs> but we've actually come a long way. So back in the day, this is obviously before I got sober. Mm-hmm. Um, we used to have a lot of fun together. We did. Yeah. We, yeah. We've never partied. Um, no. Nothing like that. We've never <laughs> never done anything stupid we, together. We had, we had the addiction episode already, John. You can tell them. It's okay. 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 We did. We definitely. My, my favorite story, though, is I went to a concert once in Philadelphia with my best friend Adam and my sister Lola. <laughs> yes. All she did was pick us up, drop us off at the concert, and pick us up from the concert. Yeah, I was the designated driver. Yeah. Oh. Where was I? I lived in Philly then. Yeah. So you were oh. staying overnight to go to your concert. Yeah, and we went to Wawa, and Lola oh. ended up with a bacon and pickle sub, because I don't think they liked her at the Wawa. <laughs> well, and that's Columbus what Street, Columbus Ave, Wawa is not bacon is the pickle. best place to be. I ended up eating it, but I ate everything that night. <laughs> you ordered every single item that you could select on the Wawa menu. Yeah, one sandwich. But... His strip was about this. <laughs> so that's why that's Lola most... got the bacon pick. Yeah, so let's be real. I've ever heard in my life. So. It, it literally, we were like, where's that receipt? We got into your car that next morning, and there it was laying on the floor. Oh. It looked like three CVS receipts. <laughs> you three were not. In the best shape no. when I came to get you. No, Adam had to sleep with a bucket. I remember. <laughs> oh, and I'm not. I'm not like praising this lifestyle, but I do have a past life. And honestly, yeah. and I can honestly tell you that was probably the last fun drunk I ever had. Because I probably yeah, you s- did. Probably got sober less than a year later. Yep. Yeah, that was my last fun one. Yeah. Yeah. So okay. Well, congrats. <laughs> all right. So all right. Well, go ahead. I know you got some questions. Oh no, you're talking. You're, you're, I, I was more interested in the history here. Uh, They're more. It Lots goes a lot fun. deeper than that. Lots of fun. <laughs> So, um, so one of the things that John was telling me about before, you know, leading up to this episode, this is the first time we've met. Yes. Um, and one of the first things that he was telling me was like, hey, she's had like a, a very interesting background with her children yes. and a very interesting background with uh, some of the stuff that you went through with adoption uh-huh. and fostering and all this kind of yeah. stuff. Right. Um, so can you tell us a little bit about that whole backstory? Yes. I had a very untraditional path to motherhood. Um, I I worked for the Department of Human Services for many years, and so that oversees children and youth, which is when I was first exposed to the foster care process and all of that. And I knew I always wanted to be a foster parent. Um, I assumed I would try to have a birth child first and then add on to my family as time went on. But we all know that the best laid plans never come to fruition, and so... um right. My husband and I had a really hard time getting pregnant and years of fertility treatment were unsuccessful. And so I said, you know, I think we just start our next step now. And so we began the foster care process and had two children, Anthony and Aaliyah, come to our home. Uh, Aaliyah was four and Anthony was four months old and they are full biological siblings, but had never lived together yet. Wow. Um, They had each been in about 10 placements prior to coming to us. 10? Yeah. Even at 10 months old? Yeah, at four months old. 
four months old? He had been in several months. placements. He wow. had been probably in five, and she was in 10. I have so many questions. Like, how does that even happen? That's He, cry- he had reflux and cried, and a lot of the people just said, I don't want to deal with it. Um, but he was an angel child. As soon as you sat him up, he just had reflux. Sorry, I mean, this makes me. Yes. So the two of them came to live with us on Coptic Christmas, which is January 7th. Uh, so it was Mina's Christmas present. Uh, so they showed up and then it was a wild experience because they literally dropped the kids off with no paperwork, no clothes, what? nothing, and hit the road. I did not know Anthony's name. I did what? not. Aaliyah told me his name was Hakeem. And I was like, what? So I thought she said it was Anthony. And Aaliyah kept being like, no, Hakeem, Hakeem. I was like, okay. So I finally got a hold of someone at Children and Youth. They're like, his name's Anthony, but we don't know his middle name. So then we finally get the birth certificate. His middle name was A King. So oh. Aaliyah, all this time, <laughs> they had been calling him A King at her wow. birth family. So oh, wow. either way. So they're with us then. We're fostering them for five months. And then the county says to me, a uh, biological grandfather has come into the picture Mm. he's just been let out of state prison for over 20 years he's never been a part of their life but we're going to place them with him that's where he they need to go and this is after five or six months of being with us who's they who the county county County. yeah yeah and so it was heartbreaking we were sharing custody with them for a while with the with the grandfather and then they said that's it he's getting them and so they took the kiddos. Can I? Can I ask yeah. Us, where, so the grandfather gets out. Yeah. For 20 years. Yeah. Where is he living? They paid for him to have an apartment. Okay. Well, at least he had an apartment. He would, cause yeah. Because there's a lot of pay for his apartment. Yeah. Wow. So that he could have housing to take the kids. Wow. That's, yeah. And I don't mind the second chance part. Like of for, course. For him. Like, yeah, the, yeah. you know, the apartment, whatever. Right. That's fine. Yeah. But yeah. Okay. Continue. So then they're gone. They took the kiddos for 10 weeks. They were gone. And I had, I woke up from a dream. I was hysterically crying. And I said to Mina, the kids are not okay. Something's wrong. And I went online and I Googled the grandpa's name and he had been arrested the day before. And he was in state prison again. And so I called children and youth and I said, where are the kids? Are they safe? And they said, they're not your kids. You have no right to know where they are. I said, just please look into it. Make sure they're okay. And that weekend I was leaving to go to the beach with some of my friends. And I was halfway down to Rehoboth Beach. And I got a phone call at 4 o'clock on a Friday. And they said, are you ready to get these kids back? And I said, if you don't take them again, yes. Because I can't (laughs) go through that heartbreak again. And it was Anthony's first birthday that day. And they came back. And we got a little cupcake at the store (laughs) quick. And uh they came back and then we adopted them officially a year and a half later. And there's three. Well, it was two at, at that time. point. Right. I knew right. that. Yep. It so was two of them the at that one? point. Mom and dad reconciled and were re- somehow got back together, had another child. Again, they were not, the county was not prepared to handle that situation. And mom was going into jail and I knew that was coming, but I had just found out I was pregnant. Wow. wow. And that Nor was going to have Down syndrome. Yeah. Wow. I knew I knew with like 90% certainty that she was going to have Down syndrome. Uh, and they're like, will you take the baby? And I said, I can't take it. I'm not even equipped. Two kids is a lot. Yeah. And then to now know you're going to have it. one with Down syndrome that you don't know what that's going to look like. And now you want me to take another kid? Right. That's only nine months. She was four months old at the time. She was four months old. I said, I'll take her for the weekend. Uh, uh, we fell in love. That's like, okay, that's, that's like you can't even take that's a kitten. You can't says. even take a kitten home for the that's weekend. Right. Right. You think, yeah, they're like, we happen. knew. <laughs> we knew. As soon as you said that, I was like, yeah, I was like, that so, doesn't work. Zara, Zara is in our family as well. We call her Zaza. Um, that's a cool name. And then we had Noor. Wow. Yeah. So, okay, you're pregnant. Yeah. You were 38 ish. Yeah. How yep. did you and Mina, Mina's your husband, mm-hmm. obviously, um, how did you guys? I mean, it's it got to be a different type of reaction when you found out Nora had. Terrifying. Hyster- I was hysterical. Really? I hadn't had a ton of exposure to folks with Down syndrome. Um, 
And our society is changing so much in what life looks like for people with disabilities for the positive. We're recognizing the benefits. We're recognizing strengths. We're empowering people to live full lives. But when I was growing up, kids with disabilities were in a separate class, far end of the hall, rode separate buses. There was no push for education. There was no push for involvement. And so it's scary, right? And the health implications that come along with Down syndrome can be scary and yeah. daunting. And that's all they tell you. They right. don't tell you one positive thing about Down syndrome, which is like 99% of it. Yeah. <laughs> it is the most beautiful gift. It is literally God on earth when you put people with Down syndrome. To, like, it's just pure it's love. It's heaven. It is literal heaven. And Nor is just embodies that. And so I didn't know that at the yeah. time. I was terrified. I was like, what's life going to be? Can I take care of a kid with special needs? I'm not an uber maternal person. So yeah. I just was like, I, I don't know if I'm equipped for this. Yeah. But you are. God gives you what you can handle. And we actually talked about that yesterday about being an advocate for something you don't know you were going to be an advocate for. Absolutely. So... Like we were on the phone yesterday and man, you said, I didn't know I was going to be an advocate yeah. for Down syndrome. Right. Um, and you said to me, just like John, you didn't know you'd be an advocate for sobriety. Right. Mm-hmm. And yeah. how, I don't know if you knew you'd be an advocate for youth to be a youth pastor at some no, point. No, I, that just kind of fell in my lap. Sure. But it doesn't fall in our laps actually, because God puts that there. Right. right. It, okay. It falls in our laps, but it's, it's, it's put there by God. Mm-hmm. Before we knew we were supposed to do that. And God designed each of us for that exact role. Sure. And he definitely planted. And we kind of talked about that yesterday yeah. about how, well, you can, you can tell a little bit. Yeah. I mean, I just, I always had a heart for people with disabilities. I just never knew that this would be the path that I was going to be put on. But, you, I mean, once you have someone in your life or your own situation that needs a voice, it's not even a question that you step into it. Every parent that I encounter at NOR that comes into the shop with a child with a disability, I see it. They're always advocating for their children because you have to. You have to be a medical advocate. You have to be an education advocate. You just have to. And it's not that it's, there's no burden to it. Mm-hmm. It's just you want people to realize the benefits of what you're talking about. If you haven't been around folks with Down syndrome, it could be off-putting or scary, right? If you don't know how to interact with someone with a disability. Mm -hmm. And that's the thing that I was saying, too, is there's a a a reclaiming of the word disability that's occurring. Mm -hmm. And I'm by no means an expert in this. I I try to be as well-versed as I can, but... The word disability is not a bad word. No, not like, at all. A disabled person is not a bad word. So right. we don't have to go around saying our specially abled friends, our special needs <laughs> friends. Yeah. Like it's a nice way to frame it, but it's okay to say I have a disability. Right. That's all right. Yeah, I have. I like I know lots of people that do and they're sure. Like, yeah. And I think the way the the world is you know, embracing more yeah. than it ever has, yeah. I think is amazing. Mm-hmm. And it, it shows with the coffee shop. Yeah. Like when everybody found out like what you were doing and like Penn Live and the news, yep. everybody wants to be a part of it. And then yeah. like I know people like Sean who who works with us on our team, like her son JD has Down syndrome mm-hmm. and he's a shining light all the time in her life. Like right. he's 35. He's, awesome. he, right. he's amazing. Yeah, he right. came to our, uh, we were doing a gift wrapping event at the uh, Capital City Mall with him and that was my first time getting to spend real time with him and he's such a cool kid. Yeah. He's awesome. And if yeah. you ever want to see, um, I forget what he does, uh, In Sync, if you ever want to go to a wedding and see him dance In Sync. I would hate <laughs> to see that. That's he awesome. does Well, it. hopefully he'll come to the, Oh, I'll, get, I'll make sure he comes. Oh, yeah, I'll, I'll make sure Sean yeah. comes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Um, yes. That'd be great. Yeah. So, you know, I think you had a question. Yeah. Yeah. So the first thing that I learned about you and about Nor Coffee, like as I was Googling around and, you know, we do research for every episode sure. and stuff, um, was, uh, of course, Nor is your daughter's name. Mm-hmm. Um, and Nor means light. It does. Um, which I thought was really interesting. Can you tell us more about how Nor kind of inspires the the light of the coffee oh, yeah. shop? Yeah, so it, it was very it was a very intentional name. Yeah, um, I figured. My I figured. husband is from Egypt, 
Yeah. Um, and he's a Coptic Orthodox Christian who immigrated here when he was nine to Lancaster wow. and speaks Arabic. And so when we didn't change Anthony and Aaliyah's names, Zara is an Arabic name uh, for Sarah, uh, which is my sister's name, and also their biological great grandmother's name. So it was, that was also intentional. But with Noor, when I found out I was pregnant, we were going back and forth on names. And he said, well, what about Noor? It means the light. And I was like, that's perfect. That's awesome. When you envision somebody with Down syndrome, they're a light, right? They are. Yep. And so then um, Noor, N-O-U-R, is the Christian spelling of the name Noor. Yeah. And O-O-R is the Muslim spelling, which is another really common yeah. name. Um, and so the tagline of the coffee shop is where everyone's light shines brighter. Yeah. And so that's the way I was able to incorporate her name that into really it cool. as well. Yeah. Thank you. I like that a lot. Yeah. And Thanks. another thing that I, I learned, you know, doing research for this and everything, um, and this this was pretty shocking to me. This was kind of some shocking stuff I didn't expect. So um, it, was, it was about neurodiverse unemployment. Um, yes. And I did not realize how bad this could actually be. Um, it's bad. And I'm, I'm going to read straight from the yeah, website. Yeah, So. Uh, neurodiverse people are three times more likely to be unemployed than people than other people with disabilities and yes. eight times more likely to be unemployed than people without disabilities. Yeah. That's pretty crazy. Yeah. And the thing I love about your page is you say, we want to live in a world where people with, uh, with all abilities have the opportunity for meaningful employment. So we're going to create it. That's right. Which I think like that is, that is good hustle in, a nutshell right there is oh, actually going you. out to do something about it. So I, I thought that was really, really cool. I never wanted to be an entrepreneur. <laughs> that is not, I mean, we worked in a restaurant our whole life. Yes. I, I know how hard it is to so run hard. a small business yeah, and sure. it was not in my plans at all. I worked in corporate America. I worked in state government. I run a nonprofit right now Yeah, and it was just not in my wheelhouse. And when nor, when I was pregnant, I think a big part of my like, coping and grieving of the life that I envisioned she could have had yeah. is was fixing right, right so that's right. that's the way I operate I'm a doer I get stuff done and yep. I was like okay well if she's not going to be able to have a safe place to work I'm going to make a safe place to work so that yeah. that doesn't hold her back right yeah, and, that and that is, other that folks can do super that super courageous and I don't think a lot of people would have felt no that, that is huge yeah well, I met people too, right? So I, I randomly met this woman, Donna, uh, at a pool. I was a day from giving birth to Noor, which is the most terrifying day because you are you know you're about to have a baby right. and with Down syndrome. And I'm at the pool standing there, 9,000 pounds, and this <laughs> young woman with Down syndrome, Demi, walks in. Oh. I had never met her. She walks into the pool, orders a Coors Light. <laughs> Drink said Coors Light and then does like a toe touch off the diving board. And I was like, it's going to be okay. This is my oh, sign. That is such a That it's God going sign. to be okay. That's amazing. And then Donna comes walking up. I said, is that your daughter? And she's like, that's my Demi. I was like, I couldn't even talk. I was like oh. so emotional that I was just like crying. And I was like, this, mean, this moment means a lot to me. Right. And we never saw each other again. And then I was like, I want to open this coffee shop. And my friend says, I know someone that has a kid with Down syndrome that might be interested in helping. How long after this is this? Two years. Okay. A year and a half. year and a half. I go and sit down at breakfast with her and she and I are talking and, I, and she says her daughter's name. And I was like, we met at the pool the day before I gave birth. It was the same person. That is so cool. And she helped me. She's like, we wanted to do this too. And so we formed all these different relationships some oh partnerships. And so they really helped. And she runs a small business herself. So there was a lot wow. of other folks that helped make this happen. Because Demi's mom uh, owns, owns Mary Maids. Mary Maids, yeah. which is local All the local well. Mary Maids, yep. yeah. And... The cool thing is I was in last week and we had this discussion yesterday and Demi waited on me and she brought something over to the table and I said, thanks, sweetie. And she goes, I'm so glad you called me sweetie. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> you. Yeah. Oh yeah. my God. Yeah. And I was she like, full circle because she yeah. saw me got hit on it. Oh yeah. yeah. And oh, I was yeah. like, and to be honest, I was super flattered. <laughs> so I, was, I was like, yeah. I'm like, I mean, it was cool. And so but then we her. talked about her yesterday and uh -oh. you're like, 
Oh, she's boy crazy. She's so she's so funny. She That's cracks hilarious. me up, and she's so boy crazy. And a lot of the actually a lot of the young women that work in the shop are. <laughs> it's funny. It's so funny because we, we were talking on the last episode about like experiences in house that you're not going to forget. And that's definitely yeah. oh yeah, and, and and what what we talked about a little bit yesterday too was like like how I don't even know how to, what the word to say like even though they're neuro, neurodiverse mm-hmm. they're just like us uh, absolutely like yeah. people we're all the same we're all humans yes like we all work the same well and the state runs a plan called everyday lives and mm. that's all we want for our children and for our loved ones to have the right to have an everyday life. Do you want a dog? Yes. Do you want a job? Yes. Do you want someone to love you and hug you and watch TV with you at night? Like we are all human beings with those basic human needs, right? right. And that's all we we ask for our loved ones is that they have rights to everyday life that you and I might take for granted sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. Well, let's talk about, I know you said you you had some partners and some Mm -hmm. different avenues to get this business started, but obviously I've known your family forever. Yep. You know, Phil and Joan are your parents. Yep. Your sister, Sarah, yeah. who um, is an amazing help for you. And then, of yes, course, your is. brother, Shane, who's, I mean, off the charts famous right now. He is, well, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Why don't it's we wild. talk about how, like, your family has helped sure. get this business going yeah. and what they've done since it started? Because, and obviously, we're going we're gonna to talk about what's happening Thursday. Yes, please. This week. Because yes. te- technically, this will air next week. Got it. So we're going to talk about that as well. Yes. Because this is a big week for you. It is. Okay. Well, let's talk about your family then and how helpful they've been. And by the way, guys, if you're enjoying this episode of the Good Hustle podcast, please go ahead, leave a like, subscribe on the YouTube. And also, we are on Spotify and Apple Podcasts now. So um, if you want to listen without the video part, you can do that. Yep. And if you're looking for any real estate needs, whether you're buying, selling, or investing, please contact Zach or myself. Our numbers are below. Back to the podcast. So I guess you could start with the phone call that I was going to have a child with Down syndrome, right? Yeah. And so my dad's a very, like, stoic man's man. Coaches, <laughs> sports. I and have just, yeah, guy. he's very, yeah. like... Well, don't forget, he is an assistant coach to our girls' basketball That's team right. volunteer. That's right. <laughs> That's right. Shane made that abundantly clear yeah, in his yes, monologue. Yeah, the SNL. Yes. Yeah, yeah, the SNL monologue was yes. awesome. Yes. so... <laughs> so awesome. <laughs> When I called him, um, I was hysterical, obviously. And his first reaction is like, well, I'm obviously going to coach your Special Olympics team. I was like, That's his first thing he yeah. said? He's like, obviously, I'm going to coach your kid. Oh, like, oh. it's going to be okay. Like, she'll yeah. be out there. She'll be playing sports. It'll be fine. Like, And it's like, that's his way of managing it, right? Like, yeah. okay, we got it. We can yeah, do it, all right? Yeah. And every, like, my mom and sister are just, they're, meant for this sort of world like they're much more maternal than i am so they're loving like i'm a great mom i'm not knocking that but they're just very much more like loving and coddling and sure mm-hmm. yep. i'm more of the like let's handle it get it done let's go mm-hmm. uh and i remember when i called shane he didn't even flinch he's like that's awesome he's like oh. what are you sad about this is gonna be great you're gonna be great this is gonna be great right and I was like, was I guess I'm being a little dramatic. Like, it's so nice to hear everyone's like, it's fine. What are you freaking out about? Like, this isn't yeah. even a bad thing. Like, why? Okay, right. you're right. You're right. You're right. So over the course, Nor's now two and a half. She'll be three in June. Uh, they've just been incredible support. They're, I mean, Nor's at my parents right now. My sister watches her all the rest of the week. My sister's her caretaker. Uh, my sister's in recovery. She's six years clean and nice. is the the most incredible caretaker you could ever wish for. She loves her as much as I do. It's like her child. That's awesome. And it's incredible. And then, like, they, my parents and Shane both invested in helping me start the coffee shop. And so they've been, like, behind the scenes supporters and promoters of folks with disabilities getting employment. And and I think that that's amazing because that support and like what your brother said when you call like that's yeah. amazing to me. Like when yeah. he said that, I like I could just cry because it's. Yeah. I know it's not going to be his kid, but for him to say, "Listen, it's going to be okay." Like this yeah. is this is meant to be. You can handle this. This is going to be an awesome thing. Yeah. And look at the doors, and we talk about doors opening up all the time on the show. Right. But look at the doors this has opened up for you. Yeah. And not absolutely just for you. But the doors that it's opening up for the community, yeah, 
and people Absolutely. that are yep. neuro, neurodiverse and neurotypical, yep. which are terms I just learned yesterday. So yes. I'm very excited to use yes. them. Um, but the doors that this is opening up and what this is doing for the ability of others and for you to make life normal for everybody mm-hmm. is just unreal. Well, the relationships that are forming between our staff are really like what I was hoping for, right? Like the relationships of like one of our, I, the term typical or neurotypical, I don't even know if I like to use it. I don't know how else yeah. to describe it, but sure. folks with or without disabilities, I guess. Yeah. I don't know. Uh, like I had some of my staff go to the movies together, went and saw Little Mermaid, people with and without disabilities. Like it wasn't a planned trip. I didn't do it. They did it because they formed relationships. Yeah, yeah that's beautiful. And they're starting to, there's friendships that occur and relationships that occur because we're humans Uh and they, and the staff that work there are special people also. They have a heart for this and they know that they're getting to work with people with disabilities. And so it's a little different environment. We're not a Starbucks. We're not cranking out 80,000 cups of coffee an hour. Every single drink they're making together. Like, and so uh, the relationships are really Really important. And I met uh, London there the other day. Angel. Unbelievable human being. She is an unbelievable human being. Yeah. And yes. just talking to her and just understanding where her heart is, is yeah. amazing. Like, I was like... Yeah. It's like, you are an amazing human. Yes. All of our employees are. They all come there for a reason. Our manager, Madison, has a daughter with developmental disabilities. She's mm-hmm. two. And so she has this background of the hospitality working in the restaurant industry, but also shares our heart and mission because she wants to make sure that Athena has a place to be as she gets older, too, you know? So it's really cool. Yeah. One thing that I've been thinking about as you've been talking about this whole thing is it seems like you've had a lot of people with this shared experience of Yes. Um, maybe you, when you first got pregnant, had a totally different picture in mind. There's another mm-hmm. podcast where I like his name's John Deloney. He talks a lot about um, how we paint a picture in our mind yeah. of what life is going to be after sure. a life event, right? Yep. And then you get a totally different picture when you find out that Nora's going to have Down syndrome. And yep. I'm hearing that I'm I'm sure a lot of the people that you work with and, and people that come to the store and everything had a similar experience where they had a picture yeah. in their mind and then it totally changes. What do, What do you think is a really good kind of common bond that you guys share together about the down syndrome sure. experience well i'm i'm gonna use a poem that tells it perfectly because i can't do it right and i'm not going to quote the poem properly but the whole thing's about you've always wanted to go to italy right you plan this trip to italy you're ready to go you're on the plane you're packed and the flight attendant's like oh well next stop holland Right. And you get dropped off in Holland and you're like, what the heck am I doing in Holland? I'm not prepped for this. Right. Like, and then you look around and you're like, oh, the tulips are beautiful. Look at the whatever they're called. The windmills. Windmills. There look at go, the yeah. windmills. They're beautiful. And you're like, but I really wanted to go to Italy, but I guess it's really beautiful here, too. I like it here. Yeah. And you get a little bit sad because your friend's in Italy. Right. Yeah. And they're enjoying the fine wine and the spaghetti. But it's pretty great in Holland, too. And so yeah. it's. I found that to be a really great analogy because you're like, Holland's great. It just wasn't my initial intended exactly. location. Right. But it's where I should have been going. Right? Yeah. Right. Exactly. Um, and we all share that. We all know, like, the one thing I really like about Nora, and I'm hoping that we are able to duplicate it, is that um, parents with children with disabilities can come there and feel safe. Mm. Sometimes if you have a child with autism or a child with a disability, it might feel a little embarrassing. Maybe you feel a little bit nervous if they're having an outburst or they're screaming or they have challenges physically getting in and out of places. Like it might be hard to go, but we make sure that no one, you don't feel that there. Yeah. And I think that that your slogan, better together. Yeah. I think that's amazing because all I can picture is what you just said, like families and moms and dads. Oh, yeah. Just been waiting for a place like this to take my kids yes because yes i've coached sports for 13 years and i've coached mm-hmm. a lot of kids um with autism mm-hmm. and i have a f- like i feel like i'm giving those kids from the program on purpose because i feel like it's a good place for my heart to be yeah and i feel and i and i love them yeah i love coaching them. it's so much fun and I build such great relationships with them. Like every year it's, I've, I think every year I have like one or at least every other year I have a kid with autism on a theme of mine. Mm-hmm. And I can remember last year 
I coached a kid, and the last game, the second the season was over, came running over to me, arms around me, bawling. Mm -hmm. And I, I just, that, I, I know that my heart's in the right place. Yeah. And yep. so you're bringing in, like, how often do people come in just like- Oh, every day. <sighs> every day you have families of people with disabilities in there. And which is great. I mean, it's showing support of our business. Yeah. It's showing the need for it, but it's also giving them a place too. And hope, yeah. hope that their kid could work there or find another place similar to work. Right. I was going to ask you too, um, what do you think is the most common problem that people with DS face that, that you feel like society could easily change? Like, like we could easily yeah. kind of alleviate and, and make more comfortable for everybody. Well, so employment yeah. is huge, right? So employment's a big one, um, but socialization is a huge issue. Yes. Um, especially once school ends. And so when school ends, a lot of those relationships that are formed through high school or college sort of peter out. Yeah. Um, but so that's why I'm launching Nori's Place. So Nori's Place is a nonprofit that we're launching on Thursday at our event, 321, which is World Down Syndrome Day. It's going to be huge. Uh, so I hope. It's, yeah. yeah, you guys will be there. Yep. Um, it's an all-day event, starts at noon, ends whenever the evening ends, live music, lots of fun. But Nori's Place is a, is a new nonprofit that we're launching, and there's going to be a, social, a big socialization component to that besides okay. providing resources to families. But socialization is a huge challenge, right? So a lot of that um, falls onto mom and dad, onto siblings to make sure that Sally has something to do on Thursday, right. right? But what if we start building these relationships and having places for, say, we watch WWF on Monday nights together? Because oh, that's, that's awesome. huge with folks with Down syndrome. I don't, it I, is. I don't know why. I, I love just, wrestling too. So. John well, Cena. then maybe you guys can host <laughs> John Cena. it. Yes, John yeah. Cena yeah. is he's the number one leader in Make a Wishes ever. Yes, <laughs> yes. I'm dead serious. Yes, yeah. well, he's got a new movie out. I need to watch. Yes, it's I know. I do want to see that. It's Ricky Stenicki. Yeah, I heard it was hilarious. I do want to see. I watched it like the first day it came out. Okay, I I watched the preview last night. I was like, this looks really fun. All right, it was awesome. Ricky Stenicki. Okay. So either way, socialization's my big biggest bugaboo right now but i'm hoping that we're going to help try to address some of that in what we can yeah. but as a typical person mm -hmm. uh if you have any friends that have disabilities or high school kids that have friends with disabilities like keep calling keep yeah. one of the young women in my shop texts me every single night before bed Aww. she's like i love you bestie good night and she That's called adorable. me this weekend. I was like, what are you doing? She's like, just watching Modern Family. What are you doing? I was like, do you just want to talk? Like, what are we doing here? Oh, I love that. It's the, so they, we're humans. We crave human contact. 100%. We crave relationships. That is a basic human need. I wonder, is there any stats that go with, if you know of the, of the what COVID did during that time? Oh, to people yeah. with disabilities? Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm certain that. it would be profound, but I don't know detrimental. that. Detrimental. Because think about the general population, right? Loneliness oh, has become such a challenge for us, and people are so lost yeah. and so sad and so lonely. And they're saying it's like as dangerous as smoking a pack of cigarettes a day on your health, yeah. being lonely. Right. So it's so critical that we get back to forming these human interactions and relationships. We've become so isolated, yeah. all on the phone, no human-to-human -human contact. And that's not what we were intended to no. do. I love talking to people. That's I know you do. Everyone knows that, John. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, it's funny, though. Like, true. I can tell you when I'm depressed, um, my body doesn't feel good. Mm -hmm. Like, I feel sick. And it's and it's a real, real feeling. Right. Because like, I go through depression. I right. Do, and I can remember the last time I was heavily depressed was a year and a half ago. And it was right. a six-month bout. bout right. Yeah. And I just, I don't feel good. I don't want to get up. And I was... I was overweight and just not putting the right things in my body, and mm -hmm. I just didn't feel good. And yeah. that human-to-human -human contact is so important for us, and COVID was was really detrimental. And yeah. I, I wish – I'm sure there are stats somewhere. Yeah. I have to look it up. But, um, yeah, yeah, and I just think, like, this nonprofit you're doing, yeah, like Nori's Place, it's just yeah. going to be such a big thing. And this event, we're all looking forward to this. So the event yeah. is on March 21st. Yes. Which is 3-2-1 day. Yes. And it is at Evergreen. Evergreen. In Mechanicsburg, yep. Camp Hill, right there on the border. Yep. You're going to have a big tent set up. Yep. 
Tables inside of Evergreen. Correct. So the other cool thing is March Madness. So there's TV's going to be going that's on right. and oh, basketball. Let's go. Yeah. 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 I, we had a discussion yesterday. Where should we be? She said, well, March Madness is going to be on the TVs. I said, put us inside. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I said that. But so we're going to be set up there, obviously. Yeah. I and mean, we're going to be promoting, obviously, business and um, the Good Hustle podcast. Yeah. We're going to play this episode on a loop there. Uh, but the bottom line, this this event's not about us, but we are so excited to be a part Thank of you. it. Yeah, we really appreciate awesome. the sponsorship. And I actually had somebody that stopped me at the grocery store yesterday, like, you were on my da- daughter's T-shirt for sponsoring <laughs> oh. the, you were on my daughter's T-shirt for sponsoring the um, the cheerleaders, and then I saw you on Norse Coffee Shop. That's <laughs> awesome. For a sponsorship there, too. That's I was so like, listen, cool. we just want to be a part of this. Yeah, that's awesome. Because it's just really, what you're doing, it's just Kind of just one of the coolest things I've seen. I'm yeah. excited for can we, it. Can we talk about something that might be a little tough? Go ahead. Okay. So how do you guys feel about the hate mail that you might get or some of the things that might be said about Norse Coffee Shop? And mm-hmm. also another thing we wanted to talk about was the R word. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, obviously words matter, right? So I'm an, I'm not a proponent of utilizing the r word yeah uh i know my brother used it on yeah, I snl i know too. that's that, that's what the the hate messages would come from so really i wouldn't get anything other, i mean people can't hate on what we're doing no, at nor yeah. i mean that's ridiculous but i did get some some nasty messages after shane was on snl uh yeah. but also talk about like the stuff that he does right as an advocate right well also amazing. he it used money into the, he's using the I'm a fan of comedy. 100%. And so I'm also for free comedy. Sure. The way you speak in comedy is as long as yeah. it doesn't have hate intent, I'm right. all for it. I'm, right. But th- to each their own. Uh, the way he uses it is in the context of a joke. Right. He's not using it in a hateful way. He is a huge advocate for the Down syndrome community. Coaching. He coached Special Olympics. He helps me with the coffee shop. He would never hesitate to to be involved. He'll be at our three two one event supporting yep. it. He's a huge supporter. Yeah, and, yeah. And, and like I look at it as a joke. It's a joke because right. I can also hear when he's talking how much he cares about yes. your daughter. Absolutely. Is it your uncle too? Sure. Yeah. I got you. <laughs> I got you. A part of the joke lore. I got, yeah. I got you. I got you. I got you. I got you. Yeah. So like I, I get it. Yeah. Like I get it. Right. Yeah. So, yeah, some uh, people don't, and, and that's okay. They'll everybody's, come at me a little. And but, everybody's uh, allowed to have an opinion. It, yeah, they are. but what you're doing, the advocate, you know, <laughs> it's it's cool because like when we were talking yesterday, just how much you opened up my eyes about it, or I, whatever you want to call it, um, <laughs> opened up my eyes, opened up my eyes about it, the good one. Uh, <laughs> it's it's really cool because I love learning. Yeah, and just like the terminology, I didn't know. Like, right. I don't know, and people right. don't know. Of and, course, and we've had that discussion. We had an equality meeting last week where somebody said something that oh yeah they shouldn't have said. Oh, and yeah. Um, yeah, we were we were all kind of sitting there like wow on edge yeah. about that. Oh, oh yeah, and yeah. bottom line is the person doesn't know right, and until they're taught, yep, yeah. They don't and know. if you approach it that way, yeah. right? If you approach it with love and if you approach it with education, instead of immediately viscerally trying to just say, "Oh, you're a horrible person, you're canceled," right? Yep. Like, get out of my life, you're full of hate. Nobody, I'm, I shouldn't say nobody. I know there's some people that have yeah. some hatred in their heart, but right. people don't want to be hurtful in their words in general. Right. But if you don't know, like with disability or people yeah. taking back that word, some people are like a little nervous to say that's a d- person with a disability. Mm-hmm. Always use person first language. That's the biggest thing. Gotcha. Person right. has a disability, not disabled person. Oh, that's that just one sense. way that you want to frame yeah. it. They're always yeah. a person first. Oh, right. that actually makes a lot of sense. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, so I'm a person with one eye. You are not you, a one eye. Yeah, person. that's true. You, you are, are a person per- with visual impairment. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Kate. Or however you'd like to <laughs> Thanks, frame <Kate>. that. <laughs> sure. I swear. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. Uh, um, so I guess like while we're on the topic of the Shane stuff, yeah. how has your whole family reacted to his like whole rise to fame and all that crazy stuff that's been going on? It's pretty insane. It is. It yeah. is. I mean, I I never saw this coming. This I can't how huge. how would you it was, yeah. like, oh, it was like overnight. It, it felt like it. Yeah. yeah. I mean, he's been working on this for a long time. He yeah. did open mics 
for now over 10 15 years now so it's not yeah. overnight to him right right but the, the rise the has rise. been yeah. like the, the meteoric on. yes oh, yeah. yes he's extremely talented oh he's yeah. very, very very smart yeah and his humor is smart and he doesn't take sides no he does which not. doesn't happen anymore everyone feels like the need to be like i'm a republican i'm a democrat yeah, yeah. never the two shall mix Right, and he does a really good job of not letting you know what he really blurs, believes. He blurs all the lines. <laughs> right, right. he makes it, fun of everyone. Yeah, because he'll make a he'll make a he'll piss off a liberal. Yeah, and then five minutes later, that same person will be dying laughing at right. something he says. Yeah. Right, and like sure. he so has he a goes, gift. He does, and actually, mm-hmm. some other major comedians have talked about that. Yeah, yeah. Like even like uh, I think I think Louis C.K. said something about how he can make. You know, make you pretty angry, right? And three minutes later, have you dying like laughing. dying laughing on the edge it's of your crazy. seat? Yeah, and yeah. I think that's where the intelligence comes right. from because yeah. he is smart. He's very smart. He is, yeah. and he's doing a lot of great things. He got a new TV show coming up, but we're not here to talk about him. Let's yeah. talk. No, that's Let's, okay. We want to kind of find out. Like Zach always asks this great question, and I'm going to let him ask it. But it's always about like what our podcast is about. Yeah, and where where you are at with that. Yeah, so, okay. so basically the, the whole premise of the Good Hustle podcast, I don't know if you watched many of the episodes or whatever. I've seen a few clips of it. Okay, yeah. Yes. So, so basically the whole the whole premise of it is to find that passion, find that drive, find that yeah. thing that you love, and, and more importantly, become the best Zach you can be, the best yeah. kid you can be, the best John you can be, right? Um, so what do you think about your mindset shift, you know, after everything happened with, uh-huh. with Noor and, and yeah. your life changed overnight? What do you think changed in your mindset that allowed you to get better and become the best version of you today? I think because I'm not doing it for me. Mm. That oh, wow. It's a lot mm-hmm. easier to go out and fight for things and talk about things when I'm doing it for someone I love more than I love myself. True. And so I think that that makes it a lot easier because it's not natural. For, I'm not a natural like public speaker. It's very hard for me. I get very anxious and... uh. I'm not some of the things are very out of my comfort zone. Right. Um, but I was able to I'm able to do it because I know what I, what I'm doing it for, what my end goal is, right? And that's to open the eyes of people that haven't had exposure to people with disabilities to the wonder and beauty of what that is. Yeah. And it's a different life entirely because you're you're going slower. You're wondering in the cloud like you're wondering in little things in the amazement of daily life that you never do because you're always go 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 but I don't have that option sometimes when I'm with Nora like she was having a hard time walking up the hill my parents grass hill today and I'm holding her hand I was like is this hard for you and she was like yeah I said well you're doing a great job and she grabs my hand and kisses it oh and it's just like my day is going to be great. That's like, yeah. she's that so the best. It doesn't get yeah. better than that. And all my kids are. So I don't want to make it only about Nora. I know sure. we're talking about Down syndrome, but right. my other three children literally are incredible humans. Yeah. Some have had more traumatic experiences than others, but they are the best siblings. It's like a crazy squad. As my brother, <laughs> my brother did do a very good job of describing us because I have an Egyptian husband, three black children, <laughs> a daughter with Down syndrome, and then me, this Irish Scottish girl. They're right. like, this is the weirdest Uber pool. Like, how <laughs> yeah. did you guys get how together? You, like, what he, is this? He nailed it. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It's, I'd never heard that until he said that. And I, it was so very, funny. very funny. Yeah. But yeah, it's when you're fighting for something bigger than you. Yeah. And that's what's driving me. And and we were talking about your sister and my life and your life and his life. And we all have a purpose. Right. And I really feel like, you know, like you said, your sister's got six years of sobriety. Mm -hmm. You know, obviously. Oh, today I had 15 and a half years today. And um, I know my purpose. Yeah. I know my purpose has been to coach children. I know my purpose has been to advocate um, sobriety. I know my purpose has been to help people in my career. Those are my purposes. Mm-hmm. Um, and knowing like, you know, I thought about this and I'm not putting words into your sister's mouth or whatever, but mm-hmm. I feel like her sobriety and getting through, I mean, she had cancer too. Yeah. Getting she through cancer. cancer is to be another bright light for your daughter. A hundred percent. Not yeah. even a question. Yeah. Like, is not cool even a question. A big purpose for your sister? For certain. Like, and she just jumped right into it. Yeah. Cause, and I, when I got to see her at your shop last year, my gosh, it made my heart melt. Cause yeah. I've seen yeah. her in years. Yep. 
and she'd been living in Pittsburgh and yeah. moved back and, yeah. and just to see how well she's doing. Oh, she's and, incredible. And I know that that was God's plan yep. to be there for you, to be there for Nora and to be there for your husband and your family. And mm-hmm. I just love when people find their purpose. I do too. And I think that's the biggest thing that I've learned from this episode is just that we're all yeah. finding a purpose. And once we do, man, does the light open up. It really does. Yeah. So last question. Sure. What do you think we're going to do next? Like, where do you see Norris Coffee Shop going? Um, I want to expand it. I want to do multiple locations okay. and uh, open up other employment opportunities for folks with disabilities. We have 10 folks right now on our employment roster, but nice. I have, I I mean, I probably have 60 applicants. Wow. Wow. Waiting. Yeah. So as long as that's happening and there's a need and we have great products. It's not just, we're not just like a coffee shop that employs people with disabilities. Right. We're a really good coffee shop that happens to employ people with disabilities. Right, right. There's a difference. Yep. Uh, and so the high quality products and just keep growing. I want to be everywhere. Well, and if you want to stop by, it's right off St. John's Church Road in Camp Hill, Pennsylvania, yep. right in front of the Elks Club. It is an amazing coffee shop. Also, this coming Thursday, the 21st, please stop by between 12 and I mean, try to get there before six, but there's no. T- well, actually, there's going to be a band coming on. There later. is, yeah, yeah. There's a band at six. We have a really cool DJ crew coming from three oh, to nice. six. These two guys called the Dream Team oh, that have really? disabilities. Oh, and they're incredible. I can't oh, wait. I can't wait. They're so this incredible. Is, and this is a fundraiser, right? It is. It's yeah, a fundraiser. So yep. there's going to be a lot going on. So please stop by. Yes, it's yes. twelve to six ish. Yeah. Plus, probably till much later. Mm-hmm. And it's Evergreen's gonna... launching a beer for us. And... Oh, oh, really? What's yeah. It? Do you know a name? Uh, well, you'll see. Oh, we'll oh. see. Well, maybe. You have to check it out. Find out. <laughs> maybe we'll see. <laughs> Got two eyes. Uh, <laughs> but this was a really great episode. We are Thank so you. Thank you. Thank you so much for coming on. Yeah, Thank you. So it was fun. So enjoy. Thanks, guys.